The Mystery of Heaven and Hell, Third Testimony The end of the world is coming soon. Therefore be earnest, thoughtful men of prayer, 1 Peter 5 verse 7. I thank God for His grace over my life. The Lord is my strength and my shield, my heart trusted in Him, and I am helped, therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise Him. Psalm 28 verse 7. The Lord promised to visit me on the 9th of February, 2013, and He did. He is the ever-faithful God. Psalm 33 verse 11. On the 9th of February, 2013, at approximately 1 p.m., I was lying on my bed, about to go to sleep when I heard a voice saying, It is time my son, prepare yourself right now. Then I asked for the blood of Jesus to wash me clean. Suddenly, I fell into a deep sleep. When I opened my eyes, I found myself in the room where I had my first encounter with Jesus Christ. I saw Jesus Christ enter. He said, My son, I want to show you many things today, for this is the last time I will visit you. You must tell them what you saw, because you have not been telling many people about what I showed you previously. The Lord started to cry because of this. I was sorrowful when he was crying because of me. When left the room, the Lord told me, My son, come. Let me show you the great judgment. Then we arrived before a great throne. The murderer. When we arrived before a great throne, I saw a woman there saying, I am very sorry. The Lord told me, look at that woman crying. She knows she cannot make heaven and that is why she is crying. I asked the Lord to tell me the reason why the woman had that thought. The Lord replied, my son, look at her. Behold. I saw her life story. She was a Christian while she was still on earth. She was looking for a man to marry and the Lord told her to be patient, but her desire to marry was so strong. She did not wait for God's time. Instead, she poisoned her friend so that she could marry her friend's husband. Because of the poison, her friend died, Matthew 5 verse 21. Then she married the husband of her late friend. Later, the husband found out that she was responsible for the death of his first wife. He then poisoned her and the woman also died. That was why the woman was crying before the throne of judgment, Luke 11 verse 47. The Lord said to me, I warned her not to do that but she never listened to me and now she is crying for help and a second chance. It is not possible. My kingdom is a holy place. It is not a place for a murderer. I warned you to repent but you never listened to me. It is too late for you. Isaiah 59 verses 1 to 3. The Lord told her, Depart from me. And a great storm carried her away into everlasting punishment. Matthew 25 verses 41 and 46, Do not kill or murder because the one that does this is danger of the judgment. Repent now and be saved. Then we left that place. Please understand this, Christ's coming is only for faithful, steadfast and watchful believers. It is not enough to simply be qualified for His coming, you must live each moment ready and waiting. Making your life count daily for eternity is the only thing that matters in this life. It is not enough just to warn and watch over others. You must also watch over yourself and take heed to the salvation of your own soul. Whenever the thought of Christ's return fills you with dread or fright, this shows there is still something wrong and you need to allow the Holy Spirit to do His work in you, Philippians 2 verses 12-13. You are better caught up, rather than cut off at the rapture. If you miss the rapture, the Antichrist will mock your faith and you will be punished more for trifling with the truth. What about if you die before the rapture? You must always be ready for the Lord's return. If you die and you have even one spot on your garment you will be cast away. Note, this statement will cause a lot of controversy in the church, 1 John 5 verse 17. All wrongdoing is sin and there is sin that does not lead to death. If you keep on sinning against God, thinking you still have time to repent, you are just deceiving yourself. It is better to repent of your sins now, because tomorrow may too be late for you. Do not kill. The Lord took me to hell. We passed through the same tunnel that we used during my first encounter to arrive in hell. Hell has enlarged herself because the devil is working hard. Isaiah 5 verse 14 250 years in hellfire. I saw a man screaming in hellfire saying, Are you here to save me? 
I have been here for 250 years. I have waited to see if I would find a savior, but I have already given up. But now that I see you, I doubt if you are here to save me. The Lord told him, I sent many of my servants to you to tell you to repent, but you never listened to me. They told you about the reality of hellfire, but you told them it was not real, it was a joke, and you thought your life was the best. You only spent your time on drinking alcohol, moving from one hotel to another, committing adultery, 1 Corinthians 6 verses 9 to 11, James 4 verse 4. You were seriously ill to the point of death, but I did not allow you to die so that you would repent and be saved, but you never even wanted to hear my name being mentioned. Now you are looking for a savior. I cannot save you anymore. It is too late for you. Proverbs 1 verses 24 to 33. The Lord was crying while he was talking with that man, because he has no pleasure in the death of a sinner. Ezekiel 18 verses 30 to 32. While you are still on earth you have an opportunity to repent, but after death, there is no more repentance. Jesus is only the Savior of the living, but not of the dead. Your breath is your opportunity. Ecclesiastes 12 verses 1 to 8, we left that place. A 15-year-old girl in hellfire. The Lord took me to another place in hellfire. I saw a girl there crying. There were so many worms and insects on her body. Whenever she removed one, many worms would come back to that particular place from which she removed the first worm. When she saw us, she was screaming for help. I asked her the reason she was there. She told me her life story, when I was on earth, I loved going to clubs to dance, 1 Timothy 5 verse 6. My parents never warned me because I was the only child they gave birth to. I loved following boys and having sex with them. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 3 to 8, Ephesians 5 verses 3 to 6, I had heard about hell fire, but I never wanted to listen. Many of my friends told me to repent, but I developed hatred toward them. Then I became pregnant and my mom reminded me of my ambition to become a lawyer. Because of this statement, I aborted the pregnancy and died. Then I ended up in this fire. I have been here for 10 years being tormented. If I remove one of the worms, more will just replace them in my body. Please help me. I am now ready to repent. I was very sad when I heard her story. The Lord told her, you cannot repent anymore. It is too late for you. The Lord was crying with deep feelings for her, but he could no longer save her. The girl screamed saying, No. 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 It is too hot. I want to die. But she could not find death. Revelation 9 verse 6, I asked the Lord to take me back, because I could not endure watching the way that girl was being tormented. Parents listen to me. Teach your children the way of the Lord. Teach them the word of God. Correct them if they have done any wrong against the Lord. Ephesians 6 verses 1 to 4, 1 John 2 verses 1 to 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old he will not depart from it, Proverbs 22 verse 6. We left that place and went to another area. A 14-year-old girl in hellfire. We must be careful and purge ourselves in this sinful world because many of our inventions defile us before God, Ecclesiastes 7 verse 29. The Lord showed me a girl in hellfire. Her torments were so horrible that she was screaming out, Enough! Enough! Please take me out! She used her left hand to cover her ear while she was masturbating with a very hot object in her right hand. She was crying bitterly, but she could not stop masturbating. I asked her the reason why she was doing that and she told me her life story, I was 14 years old when I died. When I was on earth, I loved listening to worldly music. Anytime I heard it, I had sexual feelings, and that would lead me to masturbate. I heard about this place of torment, but I never believed it was real. Many servants of God warned me about worldly music, but I called them fools. They warned me in their preaching that masturbation was a sin, but I told them God is a merciful. Now I believe they are not fools. The reason I cover my ear is because I am still hearing that worldly music and it is hurting me. The reason I use this object is because this is what I used to masturbate with, when I was on earth. Please help me, I cannot stop this, it is hurting me. The Lord told her, I cannot help you anymore. 
You have made my grace useless on earth, but in this place, there is no more grace. It is too late for you to repent. She screamed, but the Lord told her, I cannot change my words, it is written already. My word stands forever. Matthew 24 verse 35, Matthew 13 verse 31. Parents, please take care of your children, 2 Corinthians 12 verse 14, Ephesians 6 verse 1. Remember that the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Colossians 3 verse 6. Then we left that place and moved to another area. A 25-year-old man in hellfire. The Lord took me to another place in hellfire where I saw a man screaming out, I will listen, I will listen, please I am ready to listen. I asked him the reason why he was there, and he said, When I was on earth, I loved having sex with girls, especially the prostitutes. My friend told me to repent and be saved, but I replied that I didn't want to listen to any foolish preaching, I am ready for that fire, just leave me alone. But now I am ready to listen and repent. Please, please help me. The Lord told him, I gave you enough grace till you died at the age of 25 years old, but you never listened to my warning. Now you are begging to listen, it is too late for you. No one can tell you about me here, because everybody here is looking for a way to escape. Any soul that arrives here shall never get out again. It is too late for you, 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 3. Your body is not for fornication, 1 Corinthians 6 verse 13. The man screamed. I begged the Lord to take me away from that place, because I could not look at them anymore. So we left hell fire. The kingdom of God. Then the Lord took me to heaven. Praise the Lord, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and Amen, Psalm 41 verse 13. Heaven is extremely beautiful. The ground is like a mirror. I was very happy, and I had the thought in me that I would never leave. I heard the beautiful voices of the angels praising God, Psalm 103 verses 1 to 3. The Lord said, Tell my people my kingdom is very real. Blessed are those who inherit it. There were many beautiful, precious flowers, Psalm 119 verses 129 to 135. The Tree of Life. The Lord took me to a place in heaven where I saw the tree of life in the distance. It was very beautiful, shining like gold, Revelation 22 verse 2. The Lord said, I preserved this tree of life for my people. Tell them that blessed are they that keep my commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. Revelation 22 verse 14, then we moved on. The children that women aborted. The Lord took me to a very big hall in heaven and I saw many little children filled with the glory of God. They were praising God, Psalm 86 verses 11 to 13. The Lord said, These are the children that women aborted on earth. They belong to me and they will be in my glorious kingdom. Psalm 89 verses 1 to 2, Then we left that place. Angel Gabriel's Visitation While the Lord was speaking with me, behold, I saw an angel. He was tall and handsome, wearing a crown on his head. The Lord said, It is Angel Gabriel. I was very happy to meet him and the Lord instructed him to take me to many other places in heaven so that I would be able to tell others what I saw. King David in Heaven Angel Gabriel took me to a very big house in heaven. He said, It is the house of King David. I said that I wanted to see King David face to face. We entered his room where I saw King David praising God with psalms and dancing, Psalm 34 verses 1 to 6. I greeted him and he called my name, Senayon, you are welcome. I was surprised that he knew my name. He said, Senayon, you no longer praise God. You never want to dance for God. When you praise God and you dance for him, his grace will be closer to you. I asked him, how do you know this? Do you see me on earth? Or you are aware of my life on earth? He laughed and said, I speak not on my own. I later discovered it was God speaking to me through him. He gave me a small book saying, Eat it, eat it. When I ate the book I was very thirsty. I said, I am thirsty, I am thirsty. They gave me the blood of Jesus Christ to drink. When I drank it I was shaking as though I was cold for more than five minutes. All the while I was shaking, Angel Gabriel and King David were kneeling down saying, Glory be to God. Psalm 29 verses 1 to 11. 
When I had stopped shaking, King David said, Now you will praise God and dance for him. Tell the people to praise the Almighty and his grace will be closer to them. Angel Gabriel said, Senion, you have to see many things here, let us go. I said, No, I don't want to leave King David, please. He ignored me. Then we left King David's house. The house of the prophet Elijah. Angel Gabriel took me to another big, beautiful house in heaven. He said it was the house of the prophet Elijah. I was overjoyed. I said, I want to see him. Angel Gabriel took me to the house where a very handsome young man came out. Senayan welcome. I was very happy to see him. I said, you were very powerful on earth. I have read about you in the Bible. He replied, a fire is burning in your heart. You will be more powerful than me. 2 Corinthians 10 verses 4-5, he told me many things about myself. Angel Gabriel said, Senayan, we have to leave now, because you have many things to see here. Then we left that house. The house of Apostle Paul. Angel Gabriel took me to another very big house in heaven. It was made of gold, decorated with precious stones. He said, this is the house of Apostle Paul. I said that I wanted to see him. He was a model to many Christians. Angel Gabriel took me to the house and behold, I saw a very young man resting in a beautiful room. Senayan, he said, you are welcome. I am very happy to see you. I was surprised that they knew my name. They knew it because the glory of God was in them. It was not necessary for me to tell them my name. He began to tell me his life story in the book of Acts, Acts 8 verses 1 to 4, Acts 9 verses 1 to 31. When he was done, he said, I made use of the grace that Jesus gave to me, and I never made it useless. He gave me a small book and said, Eat it, eat it. When I ate it, I was not thirsty. In fact, it was very sweet. The Apostle Paul said, Now you will preach the gospel and teach the testimonies of Jesus Christ. You will teach some of my epistles that I have not yet written out. Romans 8 verses 35 to 39. Both Angel Gabriel and Apostle Paul were praising God. Romans 4 verses 20 to 25, 2 Corinthians 5 verses 13 to 18, then we left him. I was very happy. Heaven is so beautiful and filled with the glory of God. Revelation 21 verse 18. The house of Father Abraham. Then Angel Gabriel took me to another place in heaven where there was a big, beautiful house decorated with precious stones and flowers. He said that it was the house of Father Abraham. I asked Angel Gabriel to take me there to see Father Abraham. We went there and when I saw Father Abraham, I said, Father of faith, Father of faith. He began to give me advice about many things in my life. He said, you must have faith in whatever you ask the Father and be patient in every situation. Jeremiah 33 verse 3, Matthew 17 verse 20. Faith is real. Matthew 21 verses 21 to 22, Hebrews 11 verse 1. Then we left. Seven angels with trumpets and five angels dancing. Angel Gabriel took me to another place in heaven where I saw five angels dancing with joy. I also saw seven angels with trumpets. I asked Angel Gabriel to tell me about the mission or work of those angels. He told me that if a soul gives his life to Jesus Christ, then those seven angels will blow their trumpets as a sign that one soul has repented. The five angels would be dancing and the whole of heaven rejoicing. Also if a soul arrives in heaven, the seven angels will blow their trumpets and every angel in heaven will celebrate for that soul. Luke 15 verse 7. There is great joy in heaven over one soul that repents. Luke 15 verse 10. The Overcomers. Angel Gabriel took me to a very big hall. He gave me a sword to lift up. When I did that I found myself in a battlefield. I saw a countless number of people chained down. There were many demons who were putting chains on those people. Some people put on the Amor of War. Written on their backs were the words, The Overcomers. They were fighting the demons in order to set those chained people free. If they set anyone free that person would run into a room called the secret place of the Most High. I asked Angel Gabriel to interpret it for me. 
He said, the overcomers are the real Christians, 1 John 5 verses 4-5, and those who are chained down are the sinners. Those demons are assigned on a mission to take those sinners to hell fire. 1 Peter 5 verses 8-9 Fighting the demons in charge of that sinner means preaching to the sinners and praying for them. The room they ran to, to be safe, is Jesus Christ. Matthew 11 verses 28-30 and that is why it is called the secret place of the Most High, Psalm 91 verse 1. You must pray hard so that God will deliver you from the demon who is on a mission to take you to the pit of hellfire. The Sanctification Angel Gabriel took me to another beautiful place in heaven, decorated with pure gold. The ground was a transparent glass. There were many beautiful flowers and precious stones. I saw gold fixed up. I told Angel Gabriel that I wanted to touch the gold that was fixed up. He carried me on his shoulders so that I could touch them. I pleaded with Angel Gabriel that I didn't want to leave that place. I was crying because the place was so beautiful. Revelation 21 verses 18-19, Angel Gabriel said, No. You have many things to see here and it is very important that you see them. Please, I don't want to live a worldly life. Please do something about it, I pleaded with Angel Gabriel. He said, Senayon, come let us go. Then we left and went to the pool of the blood of Jesus Christ. Angel Gabriel asked me, Senayon, do you remember this place? I replied, yes. I saw this pool of blood during my first encounter with Jesus Christ. Angel Gabriel said, yes you are right. We were standing there for more than five minutes, but he did not utter a single word to me. Suddenly, I saw a pure blue light. It carried me into the pool where an invisible hand started washing me thoroughly in the pool of blood. It hurt me and I was crying. I begged Angel Gabriel to take me out but he was just kneeling down saying, Glory be unto God from everlasting to everlasting, the King of kings and the awesome God. Psalm 95 verses 1 to 6 Behold. I saw my earthly body in bed. Something dark was rushing out of my body. I was shocked that such a thing was inside of me, Psalm 51 verses 12 to 15. When the invisible hand was done washing me, the pure light took me out of the pool of blood, Psalm 51 verses 8 to 11. Behold! I heard a loud voice. It sounded like thunder saying, Now you will remember what you saw here and you will live as I want, you are no more an ordinary man because I have sanctified you. That voice began to talk to me about a brother that trained me up in the way of the Lord, whose name is Ijaja Amon Mark. The Lord told me many things about him, that he will fulfill his covenant upon him and he has given him the garment of perfection. The voice told me many things about many people. I asked Angel Gabriel, Please, I want to see the person whose voice I am hearing. Angel Gabriel replied, I don't have the power to take you there, but follow me. We left that place. The Throne of the Father. Angel Gabriel took me back to Jesus Christ. He explained to Jesus Christ that I wanted to see the Father and I finally realized that it was the Father who was talking to me in the pool of blood. Jesus smiled and held my hand saying, Do you want to see the Father? I replied, Yes. On our way to see the Father, we passed through a hall where there were many angels. They suddenly kneeled down and said, Glory be to God. Psalm 84 verse 11 When we left the hall, behold, I saw a powerful light on a throne. It was a light like a fire that was burning. Even though we were many miles from the throne, I felt like I wanted to fall down. I didn't have strength to walk toward the throne anymore. I begged the Lord saying, Please take me back. Jesus said, That is the Father. Don't you want to see him again? I said, Yes, please, please, I want to die. I cannot breathe anymore. Jesus smiled and took me back to Angel Gabriel. The Books Before the Angels Angel Gabriel took me to a big room where there was a group of angels. Some were writing names and some were erasing names from the books. I was given the opportunity to visit four of those angels. I asked Angel Gabriel to explain everything to me and he smiled. The first angel I spoke with was the one in charge of the Book of Life. Angel Gabriel said, This book is the book that contains the names of the newly born-again Christians and also the names of the real Christians and the saved people. Revelation 3 verse 5 
I asked him to tell me the reason why the angel was erasing some names and writing other names. He replied, those are the backsliders. Revelation 2 verses 4 to 5. I said, do you mean, their names will be erased forever from the book of life? He smiled and said, no. This is a holy book and it cannot contain the names of the sinners. I said, tell me where those names the angel erased will be written? He took me to another angel who was also writing and erasing some names. Angel Gabriel said, This is the backslider's book. It contains the names of those who turned away from the Lord. The reason the angel was erasing some names is because, for any backslider who comes back to the Lord, his name will be written again into the book of life. Revelation 20 verse 15 The names he was writing were the names of the backsliders, Jeremiah 3 verse 22. Then he took me to another angel who was working very hard. However, he was only writing names, not erasing them. Angel Gabriel said, This book contains the names of those who end up in hellfire every day. It is called the Condemnation Book. Angel Gabriel told me, The names will only be written if a sinner dies without having Jesus Christ in their life. Revelation 20 verse 12 Then we left that place. Angel Gabriel took me to another angel who was only writing names but not erasing them. Angel Gabriel said, This book contains the names of those who pay their tithes. Malachi 3 verses 8 to 12, the angel that was writing the names shouted, He is paid. He is paid, and immediately, I saw an angel come there. He opened a beautiful room and in that room were many precious gold objects in a box. The angel entered the room, took one of those precious gold objects and went away. I asked Angel Gabriel to tell me what was inside the box that the angel took away. Angel Gabriel said, Yes. It is the great blessing of the Lord to anyone that paid his tithe faithfully. Obadiah 1 verse 15. Then we left that place. Five more minutes. Angel Gabriel took me to a hall where there were many angels saying, Lord, it is time. Let our people come. I saw the Lord crying like a baby saying, Let us give them five more minutes. After that Angel Gabriel showed me the preparation of rapture. Everything is ready in heaven and Jesus is waiting for the go-ahead from the Father, 2 Thessalonians 5 verses 2-6. Then Angel Gabriel took me to another hall where there were many beautiful garments. It was decorated with precious, wonderful, and glorious gold. I asked Angel Gabriel, who are the owners of these wonderful garments? He replied, these are the garments that the Christians will put on for the marriage of the Lamb. Revelation 19 verses 7-9 I asked Angel Gabriel to show me my own garment. He pointed to one garment and said, This garment belongs to you. I was so excited and said within me, I will not go to hellfire, and behold, I heard a loud voice saying, Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Revelation 3 verse 11 I was afraid when I heard that voice, because it simply means, Wherefore let him that think he standeth take heed lest he falls. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 12, 1 Corinthians 9 verses 24 to 27, then we left that place. Angel Uriel Visitation Angel Gabriel took me to a very beautiful house. When we got there we sat on a seat. Suddenly I heard a great notice in heaven and the angel kneeled down and began to say, Glory be to God, thou art worthy to receive all glory. Amen. The angel told me to look. Behold. I saw an angel running and shouting, Victory, victory, victory. The angel ran to Jesus saying, He made it, he made it. I saw a man coming to the kingdom of God. The angels rushed to him to take him inside because he was already tired. At least he made it. Angel Gabriel said, The angel shouting victory was the guardian angel of the man that just made heaven. All of heaven rejoiced just because of the man that made it at last. Angel Gabriel came out of the room and said, Senayon, you are welcome. And he handed me to Angel Uriel to show me some other things in heaven. And Angel Uriel took me to a place and said, Look, look. I saw the kingdom of Satan. Satan was giving demons orders to attack the Christians because of that one man who made it to heaven. The devil was saying, Do not allow anyone to escape our traps and inventions. We must win their souls. I saw demons running with full speed, 
because one soul made heaven. And Angel Uriel took me to a place and said, Look at the earth. I saw the earth looking so very small and dirty, like a dustbin, garbage, can. Suddenly many arrows began to fall on the earth. I saw an old man who received a few of the arrows. Some of the arrows just fell upon other people on earth. Again, I saw a fire coming upon the earth, but that old man stopped the fire by sending it back to where it came from. I asked Angel Uriel, please interpret this for me, because it is a mystery. Angel Uriel said, the old man you saw was Jesus Christ, and the few arrows he received into his body were the arrows that the devil sent against the children of God. Psalm 91 verses 1 to 7. The others that fell upon the earth were the arrows that the devil sent against the sinner. Psalm 92 verse 7, and the fire you saw was the evil plans of the devil to destroy the earth, but Christ never allowed that to happen. Isaiah 60 verses 1 to 2. Angels with evil reports. Angel Uriel took me to a place where I saw many angels giving evil reports to the Lord. The first angel that came said to the Lord, at last, he lost his soul. I warned him, but he never listened to me. Mark 8 verse 36. The second angel said to the Lord, Master, that man has committed adultery. I warned him not to do that, but he allowed the devil to enslave his heart. The Lord asked the angel, Did you tell him to confess? The angel replied, Yes, but whenever he wanted to confess, the lady who was committing adultery with him showed up and he was not able to confess anymore. The Lord said, Keep on telling him to confess and forsake his sins, and he shall be saved. Proverbs 28 verse 13. The angel said, Okay master. And he went away. The third angel that came was the guardian angel of Pastor William Kamui. The angel said to the Lord, Master, the devil has sent some evil members to deeper Christian life ministry, Pastor William Kamui's church, what should I do? The Lord replied, Tell Kamui, my servant, to be prayerful, and I will give him victory. The angel said, Okay, Master. He went away, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17. Many angels came there. The most common thing they said was, at last, he lost his soul or at last, she lost her soul. The house of Pastor Enoch Attaboy. When the angel that gave the report about Pastor William Kamui went away, I asked the Lord if Pastor Enoch Attaboy was his servant or not. The Lord said, Yes, Pastor Attaboy is my servant, and I am the founder of the redeemed Christian Church of God. Look at that house. I looked and saw a very big house in heaven. The Lord said, This is the house of Pastor Attaboy, my servant. I shouted, This big house. Are you sure he is going to enter it? The Lord said, Yes, if he continues to do my will and do exploits for my kingdom. Matthew 28 verses 19 to 20. I asked the Lord to show me my own house. The Lord smiled and said, Look at it my son. I saw a small beautiful house. The Lord told me it was my own. I laughed and said, But I never paid any tithe. The Lord smiled and said, It is not only tithes that build you a house here, but, when you tell people about me, that is a reward also to build you a house, and also when you win a soul for me, it is a great reward to build you a house. Also, when you pray for people, it is another great reward for you to build your house. When you do good to others, it is one of the great rewards that build your house here. If my people want to have a house here, they must obey what I just explained to you. So, you have this house just because you take more time in praying for others especially my group that I established, the Overcomers group, and also because you tell people about me and you have won souls for me. Mark 1 verse 15. Angel Uriel took me back to Angel Gabriel who showed me how big these testimonies will be in the world. He told me many private things about myself. Angel Gabriel took me into a very big hall and behold, I saw many angels singing praises unto the Lord. They played many instruments to glorify the name of the Most High God. I joined them in praising the Lord. The song was so melodious. The voices of the angels were so beautiful. There was no shame in heaven. The angels were dancing. Some who were flying suddenly knelt down and began to say, Glory be unto God. Revelation 5 verses 9 to 14. I was so happy to be in their midst and I desired to be there forever, praising the King of glory, Revelation 4 verse 11.
we left. Angel Gabriel took me back to Jesus Christ. Jesus said to me, My son, tell me, what do you want to see here or what do you want me to show you? I replied, Jesus Christ, your will should be done because you know all I need to see here. He looked at me and smiled saying, My son, come. The Fruit of the Holy Spirit The Lord took me to a place in heaven where there was a very big screen. On it was written the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. The Lord told me, your nine fruits must be complete. If only just one is missing, such a person cannot come into my kingdom because my standard for heaven stands forever. Galatians 5 verses 22-23 The Rapture The sudden appearance of Christ in the air to receive his own into glory is the supreme hope of all sincere believers. It is certain that anyone who does not get caught up when Christ returns will be cut off, Matthew 24 verses 42-44. The Lord said, My son, come let me show you how the rapture will be. Look at it very well. Behold. I saw a very big church on earth. Over three million people were present in the church. It was as if they were holding a convention. In the twinkling of an eye, the rapture took place and only three students were raptured. All of the others were left behind. Mark 13 verses 30-37 I saw the founder of the church, he too was left behind, and he knelt down and said, O oh Lord, I have two hundred parishes and I never preached the truth, but now I am left behind, please forgive me. The Lord said, It is too late for you. You can make it, only if you can endure and refuse to take the mark of the beast. Revelation 13 verses 16 to 18, Revelation 19 verse 20. If you are a pastor or minister that never preaches the truth, remember that you cannot defend yourself before God, 1 Peter 5 verses 2-4. I also saw a school where the principal was addressing the students. Suddenly, only the principal was raptured and the students were left behind, 1 Peter 4 verse 7. I saw a teacher who was teaching some students. Suddenly, only three students were raptured, the teacher and the other students were left behind. 2 Peter 3 verses 9-14 I saw a pregnant woman who was on her way home. Her pregnancy disappeared because the baby was raptured but the woman was left behind, Matthew 24 verses 40-51. There was great sorrow all over the world, Matthew 25 verses 31-46. Many Christians were left behind because of their attitude towards sin through the sinful inventions of man, Psalm 106 verses 39-40. The Lord said, that is how rapture will take place. It is time to go back to the earth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Watch and pray. Then the Lord sent me back. The End Prayer of Forgiveness If you are ready to give your life to Jesus Christ, pray the following prayer. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Behold, I was shut in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean, wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Psalm 51, Write my name into the book of life. And let there be joy in heaven over the salvation of my soul in Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Please pray for me because I am facing a lot of challenges from the devil. Thank you. The End